you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Second down, 13. At the 45 of Baltimore. Brunel back in the pocket. Has a bit of time. Now being chased. Plants throws. He's looking downfield. He's got a receiver. And it is caught. Jimmy Smith at the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. He wow. gets Wayne Starks for 45 yards. Sparks out for signals. Drops to throw. Has time. Fires the slant. Jimmy's got it this time. 35, 30. Middle of the field. 20. He's going to the 20-yard line. He's going to score. 10, 5. Jimmy Smith. Touchdown. And the Jaguars are right back in this ball game. <laughs> Marks out the signals, pressure coming, steps up, steps, turns, throws, he's got Jimmy, first down, 20, there he goes, 10, 5, touchdown, win, Jacksonville. Done Under pressure, steps to avoid, turns and throws, he's got him in, caught Jimmy, inside the 40-yard line to the 37, and down at the 36. Congratulations to Jimmy Smith, that is now his 800th career reception, and what a play to get it on. This team winning right now, uh, it, it helps bring so much attention to our franchise, what we did back in the day, like we were talking about, the, the Hall of Fame conversation. But when we're winning, we see the conversations pick up. So we have noticed that. So obviously, you know, I'm, I'm pulling for my team to get to this Super Bowl. 1010XL 92.5 FM presents Jaguars Today with your hosts, Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Wednesday. Three weeks, one day for the NFL draft to arrive. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, Dylan Denmark here with you. We are also rooting for our team to make mm-hmm. it to the Super Bowl. Is that like the uh, Hall of Fame equivalent of pointing at the stands? Like, is Jimmy saying there that if the Jaguars were to go to the Super Bowl this year, that next year when the Hall of Fame process, Fred's getting in? Maybe. Right? Like, is he at least implying that? Uh, Possibility? He thinks it helps. Yeah. Well, yeah, I certainly think it helps. I yeah. don't think – I mean, I, I suppose it wouldn't hurt, right? No, yeah. Yeah, Jags won the Super Bowl, then all of a sudden you're doing a look back at the 30 years of Jaguar football history, and maybe we should take a deeper dive into just how good Fred Taylor was. I heard after the vote – and I didn't hear this leading into it, but heard after the vote that he really wasn't even considered that strong candidate mm-hmm. this year in the room. You know, not that – all 15 guys aren't deserving of some level of Absolutely. consideration. You know yeah. what I mean? But, I mean, in terms of who is likely to get in, oh, yeah, Fred, we'll obviously vet him, but, you know, got a lot of other he's, guys waiting in he's line. He's at his place thing. in line, right? Like, that's the way that it felt coming out of the process this year. Every so. fan base has their their feels like their guy should be the next guy. Absolutely. Too. But, uh, and I, I'm right there with Freddie yeah. T, you know? And I don't, you know – we're both baseball fans, yeah, right? And I like the way the baseball voting goes for the Hall of Fame, right? You retire five years later, you're on the ballot, the names that get sent out to all the voters, mm-hmm. and if you don't get 10% of the vote, you're off the ballot, right? Like, I kind of like that part of the process when it comes to Major League Baseball and the Hall of Fame and that you have to get the 75% to get in. The year you're going to get in, you got to get 75% of the voters to vote for you to get in. I do think baseball is in a different situation than football. Like, football does feel like, you know, I don't know how it would look if you sent out the 15 names, right? Even if you just limited it to 15 names, who's going to get 75% of the vote if all those guys get Well, who are you votes? sending it to as well? Right. All right, you've got, you know, like the 15. They'd have to expand that for sure. Big time. I mean, yeah. baseball has hundreds of people voting on the Hall of Fame. So, they had 75% of the ballot on all those is pretty good representation of how you're looked at. But also baseball's carried the steroid grudge or however you want to look at it forever. You know, you don't know. Absolutely, yeah. Like right now, like basically in the NFL, I don't know how they'd handle a situation like O.J. Simpson if he were now eligible for the Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame as opposed to already being in there, right? And at least being found civilly culpable for killing two people. Yes. If not uh, guilty of murder in a court of law – I don't know how they would handle that. But, like, LT had all kinds of off-the-field issues. And it was like, so, you know? Yeah. Okay. And what did he do when he was a football player? For the most part. Yeah. I think that's how those conversations went. And they, they held it against T.O. because he was just a bad dude in their minds. I like, mean, right. <laughs> like, they held that against Sh- him for a couple shirtless of years. Shirtless like, sit-ups in your driveway. Is, how dare you? Yeah, what is this process? Yeah, it's – I don't know, man. I, I think NFL people think that – they're a little bit more protective. They feel like their game 
maybe isn't as understood by the widespread masses, right? The unwashed masses. Like, baseball's more of a statistical-driven sport, so you mm-hmm. can sit here and you can crunch your numbers. But we, the football, uh, you know, uh, gatekeepers, yeah. so to speak, uh, we understand this game at a level that uh, the mere mortal cannot. I do think there's some of that exclusivity to mm-hmm. it that they enjoy as well. But, look, bottom line, you know, Which is why you wind up with a room of 15 people that could all get in. Right, they could all get in. And that's right. the thing. They, they've chosen to limit it. Baseball doesn't have the problem because baseball doesn't have six or eight guys every year hitting a 75% threshold. No, because they have some years where they don't they vote in. in anybody. Right, they're voting them in when they get to the 75% threshold. Yeah, right? that's like, it. That's you when either you get, get and, and sometimes your Hall of Fame class is one. Yeah. Yeah, one guy. Oh, look, who's going to the Hall of Fame this year? Sometimes it's four, sometimes whatever, but football's always putting in the six modern guys, the, yep. you know, plus, you know, the the veterans committee, the contributors. There's always a big group Absolutely. that's going in there. Yeah. I get it. There are a lot it's of a different process. Well, and yeah. the, the rosters are twice the size in football yeah, as well. It's more and, complicated. And I get there it. There are a lot of different positions, and how do those positions contribute to victory? You know, some people think there should be no kickers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I, I mean, honestly, does it bother you all that much? No. Uh, except when your guy doesn't get it. There should be no kicker in the Hall of Fame ahead of Fred Taylor. Well, I guess then you're saying there should never be a kicker yeah. in the Hall of Fame because there's always going to be somebody you can point to that it's, you say, that guy's more important than a kicker. Yeah, the NFL has set up a system where, look, Aaron Donald's going to be eligible for the Hall of Fame in five years, yeah. and he's going to get in on the first ballot that he's eligible to get into the Hall of Fame. And, and he I've, should. I have no problem with him being a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Like, that part of the process doesn't bother me. It would probably bother me if I was the fifth guy. You know, like if I'm the fifth, sixth guy and that year – could have been the year that I got into the Hall of Fame, and who knows what happens the next year. Yeah, but, what, I mean, what are you going to do with that? Unless you open it up to, like, they, they don't want 20 people going in the Hall of Fame class either. Right. They, they want some They've degree. They've decided they, they don't want to do it that way. Right. Right. Which, this is how that process looks. Well, do you want a 30-man Hall of Fame class every if year? If they had done it early, it wouldn't have bothered me. Maybe. Right, like if they had been willing to, you know, bite that bullet early on in the process, we might be at a point in the process where it's like, we get it, Hall of Famer, right? As opposed to here's a room of 15 people that we think they're all going to get in, right? <laughs> Eventually, it's the way they talk about it every year. Eventually, they're going to get their shot, and we're going to get them all in. Like, like That's the way they're talking about it. It's like, I don't know. Okay. I feel I, feel, I, I kind of like, and I've never really given a whole lot of critical thought to this. I don't sit there and, and worry about the seventh guy unless it's mm-hmm. you know a guy like Freddie Tia, who I want in there. I don't have many... Uh, torches that I'm carrying for anybody to try to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But if you had a class of 15 every year for a decade, I'd feel like it's kind of watered down. Even if you felt like eventually all those guys are going to get in, well, how long would it take them under this system to get in? You're talking about 150 guys, right? So you're talking about decades of that. Is that 25 years, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Would be 25 years, right? Six guys, uh, 25 years, six guys a pop. So – as opposed to just pouring them in in that shorter time frame. And then it's not just that you're putting all those guys in in 10 years. Then the next 15 years you're going to put in even more, more than, you know, one and a half times yeah. as many on top of that. And would they all be considered? I just feel like it would get down to, all right, you're pretty good. You're going in the Hall of Fame. And I do think there's something to you. you that year – you were among the six best candidates mm-hmm. to get in. And uh, it's tough, man. It's a tough system. I it get is. it. Yeah. Uh, it, which makes it very sweet that even in a small market town that never sent a team to the Super Bowl, Tony Baselli finally broke through, even Absolutely, though he had a, an yeah. injury shortened career. Baselli plays five more years. He's been in the Hall of Fame for a long time. And maybe because of that, you break the Jaguar seal, maybe Fred's already in. Mm-hmm. Honestly, right? I mean, it could have gone that way. And it, there's nothing else. Fred would have needed to do to be considered Hall of Fame worthy, uh, much like Pockets. Good morning, Dylan Denmark. Good morning, sir. What's How are you going doing? on? Uh, big day today. Oh, is that right? Yeah, the new Call of Duty update comes out at noon, so oh. we got we to gotta wrap this show up, and uh, we got to get home. I didn't even realize you were like a Call of Duty guy. What's your... No, nah, not really. No? No, I play it occasionally, like two or three times a week. What's your uh, Call of Duty handle? Uh, I don't even know. You don't even know, or you or you don't want it out there because there's like there's a PlayStation one, and there's one like for Activision on Call of Duty. Uh huh. So, are you worried people are going to be hunting you? No, I, nobody wants to play with me. I am terrible 
for, trust me, I'm terrible. Bad. Okay, you know, like nobody wants to team up with you. Yeah, yeah. Saying. If you want to play, you want to win, and you, you can't win with me. Okay. Like, I'm the first one that dies so, every time. So then who do you play with? Do you like uh, uh, My cousin, brother-in-law, and then one of their friends. Can you, if you, I, I'm ignorant of this because I haven't been in the video game sphere in a while, but uh, if you have Call of Duty and you don't have your like preset group of people, can you just jump in? and? Like, yeah, you can join random people. You can? Yeah. And now yeah. it doesn't even matter what console it is. Like, it used to be like you, don't, you can only play with PlayStation people. Now you can play with... Xbox, PlayStation, you ever, online uh, people. You ever jump in there with some random people and then, oh, yeah. like, turn traitor and, like, shoot them in the back of the leg and stuff no, like that? No, because you can't shoot your own teammate. Oh, you but, can't. But, but it's yeah. all about communication. Some of these people don't even have a headset. You're like, dude, why are you playing? Like, we got to beat. We got to communicate. How are we expected to simulate <laughs> real warfare here? Yeah, like, I'm going Friendly around the building. You know, I'm going in the building, you know. All right, well, I... Congrats to all who celebrate Call yeah. of Duty Day. I'll keep you updated tomorrow how it goes. Out there. I'm sure you will. Uh, your kill count. Uh, <laughs> I mean, or your your death count, as the case may be. Uh, if you want to get in today, folks, we got a fun question of the day. Just kind of going in a little bit of a different direction. We try to see how we can ask the same question basically three months running mm-hmm. every single day. Uh, <laughs> not quite that, but uh, today we're asking you about players that you think the Jaguars might take with the 17th pick. Like, they're not going to take some – you know, random guard out of Montana State, you know, who's projected as a sixth rounder. They're also not likely to take uh, a quarterback. You know, they're not likely to take uh, Joe Alt, who's not likely to be there, mm-hmm. the the tackle prospect. So a player you think the Jags might take with the 17th pick, maybe one who's been mocked to them or we've discussed or you think can fall somewhere between picks 10 and 30, whatever. Uh, and But you really hope they don't take this player for whatever reason. It could be one of the popular guys. Maybe you don't think Brian Thomas is the full route tree, Tony, that I've read about with him. Like mm-hmm. the questions about the route tree with Brian Thomas Jr. We're getting deep in a draft season now. But maybe it's that, or maybe it's a guy that you're like, oh, I've heard that maybe like if it falls a certain way and – They'll reach for this guy, and I, I just don't want that guy. Whatever it is, whoever that guy is that gives you the heebie-jeebies, if they select him with the 17th pick, tell us who that might be. I, I actually have a short list of players mm-hmm. that fit that because I can never adhere to the specifications of our own <laughs> question of the day and limit it to just one. So you can give us one, or you can give us as many as you like uh, for that spot. So uh, let us know your thoughts on that and anything else Jaguar-related. We got John Osier. Stopping by today from Jaguars.com. We also have Tony Pauline from Sports Kedia, one of the best draft analysts in the business. He'll be along uh, in about an hour from now to give us his thoughts on what the board looks like and uh, what the Jags might be interested in doing and what might be a, a good plan of attack for them based on the depth at different positions in the draft. Got a couple of mocks that have come out as well in the last 24 hours. We'll take a peek out if you want to be a part of it. 641-1010 on the All-Pro Roofing phone lines or on the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures. You can hit us up in the YouTube chat or on social media, at MD underscore 1010XL, at 1010XL Fat Tony, and at 1010XL Denmark. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws, baby. All right, here we go. Jaguars today off and rolling. Tell us the player you think the Jags might just take at 17 that you really are hoping that they don't. That's today's Chad and Sandy Real Estate Question of the Day. You're listening to Jaguars today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. It's a Weight Loss Wednesday on Jaguars Today from the JOI Studios. Awaken 180 Weight Loss, your long-term solution for weight loss. He's not afraid to tell the truth. You ever hear of Superman? He died fighting next to me. My point exactly. The Truth Teller, Rick Ballou. What are your superpowers again? Weeknights on 1010XL. I help him because no one else does. Hey, folks, Mike Dempsey here for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. So what's your excuse today, huh? Why are you not starting with Awaken 180 today? There's always an excuse, right? Well, I got a big event coming up. Or, man, I just got some food in the fridge. I got to clear it out. Or, oh, it's the holidays. Well, guess what? Easter's in the rear view now. Which holidays are you worried about? And, by the way, you can get through the holidays with flying colors. I did it with Awaken 180. I lost weight during football season and then kept it off through the holidays because Awaken 180 has a great plan, not only for losing weight, but for maintaining that weight loss. So what's your excuse going to be 
today. You just don't want to lose the weight. Maybe that's what it is because it will work. Awaken 180 works for everyone I know that has tried it. It has over a 98% satisfaction rating from over 21,000 customers throughout its lifetime. How can you be the next success story? Pick up the phone and call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Find out why I and so many others have had success. Go online to awaken180weightloss.com. Osprey fans, giving day at the University of North Florida ends at noon. From athletics to scholarships, lend your support today. No gift is too small. Swoop and support the Ospreys. Visit givingday.unf.edu or call 904-620-1672. Tired of changing out bad sod year after year? Get it done right with Roundtree Sod. Big or small, they have it and always supplied farm fresh. For a lush, legendary green lawn, call 7414-SOD for a free estimate. 7414-SOD. It's Kubota Orange Days, your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And get the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenny. Coastal Equipment. Bring your marketing to the next level with 3D Digital, your local video production and digital marketing agency that specializes in ensuring your brand's story is seen, heard, and remembered. Our award-winning team creates professional content that will be launched across multiple platforms to precisely target your audience. Call us at 904-712-4004 or visit 3digital.com to define, design, and deliver exceptional results for your business. Bet, bet, bet on the ball game. Get your money down. Money lines, totals, and parlays. We're cashing tickets all around. It's baseball betting season, and VEASAN's MLB betting guide is a home run for bettors. Download your free special edition of the guide, featuring a betting preview of the Atlanta Braves and Tampa Bay Rays at 1010XL.com. That's 1010XL.com. Fernandina Beach, live local radio for Jacksonville. 1010 XL, 92.5 FM. Mueller Air Conditioning presents... Are you cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice a Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Again, sent bead story. Jim was at the laundromat when he heard his ear said Maraca, senor, but his nose said. Hey, freshest scent ever. Following his nose, Jim found a man pouring a bottle of Gain Scent Beads into the washer. The scent, the freshness. Jim blurted, Sir, your scent maracas smell amazing. Actually, Jim, most noses call them Gain Scent Beads. Try Gain Scent Beads, way fresher than detergent alone. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. When it's time for the March Mania brackets to bust wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The Mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. <laughs> Bonus offers. And when the madness starts in Cinderella, <laughs> man steps under the... <laughs> BetUS always has your back with... <laughs> Back to back to back, 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits. And even 10% gambler's insurance. 
BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game... Join today, BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Now, more Jaguars today on 1010XL. Uh, I'm seeing uh, set videos, Tony, from Daredevil Born Again, where it appears like uh, he and Punisher may be doing some kind of team-up. So, just wanted to geek out on that for a moment. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one coming out. Marvel's been in a slow roll phase yeah. recently. Um, put out some questionable products at times, but uh, you know what? We're not in a slow roll phase when it comes to the NFL draft. It is coming now mm-hmm. down our throats in rapid fire fashion. And, uh, you know, a lot of I, maybe I should have made this today. Who's the player you don't want at 17 other than Nate Wiggins? Because <laughs> we're getting a lot of that. And I appreciate that uh, from the Jaguar faithful who are skeptical about a cornerback who weighs 173 pounds. Mm-hmm. You know, go match up with Mike Evans, Nate. Right? Like, right. what are you going to do with a guy like that? I don't know. I mean, like, I get it. He's very fast. He's a good player. He's considered a first-round prospect. Someone's going to take him. He might be fantastic in the National Football League. That doesn't mean I'm comfortable mm-hmm. with a guy that size being taken with the 17th pick in the draft. When you've got so many different directions you can go with that selection. I'm not, a, you know, opposed to going corner specifically. Certainly not. Just don't think I want him. Uh, and there, there are others like that as well that, that just don't fit for whatever reason. You know, it's a size thing, speed thing, the productivity thing. Several people have mentioned Chop Robinson. He's got all the measurables. Mm-hmm. Where's the productivity? I don't need that. I don't need uh, Caleb on Chase on part two. Chop Robinson, maybe I'm going to be the one who misses out on his 18-sack rookie season. I'll take that risk. That'd be sweet. It would be him. sweet. Well, it'd yeah. be great for him or whoever yeah. drafts him, but uh, – I'm going to guess that won't be the case uh, regardless. So I uh, got a trio of mocks uh, I found today that might be of interest to folks out there. Lance Zerline over at NFL.com had the Jags taking Terry and Arnold. I don't think yeah, then there's an example of one of the corners out there. Uh, some people have him rated very highly. In fact, I was looking at one of the mocks that, that – I forget who they had the Jags taken, but let's say they mentioned Terry and Arnold as a top 10 player in this draft, but as we know, every mock has got a billion quarterbacks going early, and if it holds up that way, we're going to get probably a better level of player at 17 than you typically get. At least it seems that way this year. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I'm trying to find where uh, Daniel Jeremiah wound up putting him on because he put out his fifth edition of the top 50. Okay. Yeah, and when I when I find him, I'll let you know. But again, NFL.com doesn't make it easy to find anything, do they? No. Right? Like there should just be a button at the top that says Daniel Jeremiah. It's got him at nine. Nine. Terry yeah. and Arnold. Maybe that that's who I was looking at. But I, somebody yeah. else I think had him right in that range as well. I don't think it was Jeremiah. When did he put that out? Today. Today. Give us top seventeen in I, order. Well, that's good. I, and that's because good. I do think whether they admit it or not, and of course they're not going to admit it. I do think some of the draft guys like to marry up their rankings with the guys mm-hmm. that, that, you know, as, uh, okay, we got a little kind of a consensus on who's going to go in the top 20. I better make sure my top 20 kind of yeah. mirrors that a little bit. Like, is it really your evaluation if you find out, well, all the GMs really love so-and-so. Now I need to include him in my top 15 picks. Well, maybe. Based on your film study, mm-hmm. where do you have him ranked? That's that's what you should yeah. go on. No surprise, Caleb Williams at one. Okay. Marvin Harrison Jr. at two. Okay. Roma Dunze, three. Okay. Uh-huh. Malik Neighbors, four. Okay. Drake May, five. So so those three, three of the four top picks are wide receivers yes. other than Caleb Williams. Right. And he's got May just ahead of Jaden Daniels. And, every, and not everyone. There, There's just that faction out there that thinks the Jags are going to be making that bold move up in there and to get one of these guys. That'd that, be fun. Ugh, it yeah. would be fun. It would be expensive. Yes, it would. As can be. All right, who else? Uh, Brock Bowers. Okay, Brock mm-hmm. Bowers, six then? Seven. Seven. Who does six? Six was uh, Jaden Daniels. Okay, right behind Drake May. Yep. Got it. Brock Bowers, seven. Okay. Joe Alt, eight. Yep. Terry and Arnold, 9. Okay. Talise Fuaga at 10. Uh, Troy Fautanu 
at 11. Okay. Dallas Turner, 12. Mm-hmm. Quinion Mitchell, 13. Jared Verse, 14. Uh, Fashanu at 15. Latu at 16. And then Brian Thomas Jr. at 17. Interesting. Um, I think if you took Latu and Thomas out, even though obviously they're the last ones, mm-hmm. I could get – I don't know if they'd be right. I think there would be a lot of people that would put those same 15 in their top 15. And I don't know – I don't have a yeah. clue if they're right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm going to sit here and tell you that I have broken down the film of Olu Fashanu. Yeah. Okay? But when everyone mm-hmm. says he's one of the top two tackle prospects, almost universally – got to take that seriously at a certain point now guys bust even you know uh universally regarded prospects bust but uh, it does seem like there's a pretty clear 15 ish latu he could go 16 he could go 26 he could go in a lot of places i'm sure one or two of these guys might fall as well and there may be one or two other surprises that uh you know people are regarding maybe it's another offensive lineman who knows what it is Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly, but I think that's those first fifteen names are are generally pretty consensus yeah. guys at this point in time. No doubt, he does have McCarthy at twenty. By the way, just on his list. Okay, not everyone has him. Yeah, like on their quote big board, but I I wonder. I'd love to see see the progression in time where he's had McCarthy and what has made him rise up his board. Yeah. You know, uh, because he, he they're not playing football. No, right yeah, now. you know, and they all tell us. It's the film. It's the film. Yeah. It's the film. The film's not changing. Yeah, and I think Cooper DeGene, who's a name we've talked about throughout the process mm-hmm. with the Jags, right? Like, he yeah. was mocked to the Jags a couple of times early on yes. after the season ended last year. He's got him at 25 on his list. I am really curious. You know, he sent out the letter to all the teams. He's let them know, I'm healthy. I'm good to go. I'll be working out doing everything What's next the, week. Is it the 8th? He's doing it? Yeah, it's next week. Okay. It's, I think it was a week from Monday Yeah, yeah that, that he'll be doing it. So, Cooper DeGene, what does it look like for him when all the teams get a chance to look at him? Because he's at 25 right here. But I know when the season ended, there were several locations that you could have found Cooper DeGene was the top corner on people's mm. board, right, going into the draft okay. process. But he hadn't done anything. Well, it could put himself in – if he shows he's healthy and if that's mm-hmm. what's holding him back – Maybe he puts himself in the top 15 prospects. He, that's the thing. Would you be happy with just about, uh, other than the quarterbacks? Mm-hmm. Right? And there were only three of them listed in those top 17 players. Yes. How many of those 17 players would you not be happy with? I'd be skeptical about Latu. I would, because I, I don't, he's had a big time injury history. Plus, I think the idea of taking edge rush there, while I understand it, is not appealing to me as some other positions would be. Okay. So he would be probably the one guy I'd be the least interested in. Yeah, There's I had pro- him at five on my list uh, when we did the guys that I would be interested in. That you in want? Yeah. yeah. He's, not, he's not there for me. Yeah. Um, but that would be, as I said at the time, the injury thing is a thing. Could you come – I bet you between the two of us we'd come up with eight guys that were not in the those top 17 that we'd be like, yeah. Oh, you yeah. You know what? Trade back four spots and take any one of these eight. Right here. Sure. And I bet we'd come up with a pretty good list. Byron Murphy wasn't mentioned, I don't believe. Nope. You know, uh, you'd probably have a corner or two in there. You might have a wide receiver or two in there. Who knows how many offensive tackles. Yeah. Right, that I'd be okay with, you know, right. if they were going to make that kind of move. And, presume, and we're not saying that guy at 17. Mm-hmm. We're saying – little added value on top of it. Yeah. Which, you know, but then again, every other team is looking at it the same way. If you're sitting there with a 23rd pick in the draft, depending on what your specific needs are, maybe you've got yeah. a guy at a specific position that is falling, that cannot be replicated, that you feel like you've got to make that move now and get up there and get in position to get him. If that's the case, great to the Jags' advantage. Or it could be a lot of teams going, you know what? I could use this, this, or this, and mm-hmm. much like the Jags, we'll be happy with one of any number of guys uh, in here. Cincinnati, right behind Jacksonville. That's what we need to start looking at. The Rams uh, behind Cincinnati, Pittsburgh in there. Could Pittsburgh move up for Jackson Powers Johnson, for intru- in um, instance? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you know, one of those words is right on the tip of my tongue. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, 
it may not be to get ahead of Jacksonville. Maybe in that case, it's to get ahead of Seattle, who's been rumored to be interested in Jackson mm-hmm. Powers Johnson. And if the Jags aren't planning on taking Jackson Powers Johnson, much to the dismay of the must draft to center contingent, which I think is small after the Mitch Moore signing, uh, then it'll benefit the Jags at one of those other guys that we're talking about. It's going to slide down to him. Uh, mentioned, all right, so Terry and Arnold from Lance Zerline going with the 17th pick, and he just said uh, C.J. Stroud and the Texans put the AFC South defenses on notice last year. Arnold's an in-your-face coverage talent with high football character and the competitive fire Jacksonville coaches will love. Well, they do look for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that that guy who's going to be all about football, not going to be an issue, those kind of things, doesn't guarantee you win, but hopefully it also avoids some discord uh, in the locker room in the practice facility, what have you. I don't think anybody's going to bat an eye if they draft Terry and Arnold. We'll look at a couple of other mocks when we come back here in a second, Tony, and see if you'd feel equally okay with the guys that are projected to go 17th in those. In fact, one of them over at Pro Football Network, a seven-round mock, so at least look at the positions. I think they did in the first five picks or so that I was really looking at. I think they did a pretty good job hitting the positional needs for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll get into that. Coming up, uh, don't forget uh, John Osher at the top of the hour. Tony Pauline from Sportskedia, uh, formerly with Pro Football Network, will join us in hour number two at about 11.20 and break down some of his top prospects in this NFL draft, particularly the ones that line up with the 17th selection for the Jags and who they might be able to find at 48, 96, and even later that fills some key needs for this football team. You're listening to Jaguars today. Keep it right here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. It's a weight loss Wednesday on 1010XL. A week in 180 weight loss. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. Hello, you're on the air. 1010XL has a new lineup. Launch. Here we go. Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Mornings. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony. 10 to noon. Mia O'Brien, Lauren Brooks, and Taylor Dahl. Noon to 2. Joe C., Matt Hayes, and Leon. 2 to 4. Frank French and Hayes Carlisle. 4 to 6. And Baloo and Hacker in the evening. Flip a dial. Instant entertainment. Crosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver, and that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so, and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, There is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, I, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. Lauren Brooks here from Mayport CNC Fisheries. Growing up at the beach, I know good shrimp and oysters when I see them. They're local and they're fresh. That's why Mayport CNC Fisheries is my go-to for both. They have local shrimp in stock seven days a week. Eat like a local at Mayport CNC Fisheries. If you're an experienced, skilled plumber or welder that's MedGas certified and you're tired of working for a company that just doesn't treat you right, Local 234 is the place for you. Their pay is the best in the business. You'll walk away with $35.09 an hour in your pocket with benefits that's just over $50 an hour. Local 234 has been around since 1901, and that means something. Visit UA234.com to send your resume. Local 234, make the right connection. A lot of companies will tell you they're the best. At Custom Tree Surgeons, they show you every time. Custom Tree Surgeons has built an all-pro team. Every tree service professional has years of experience, continually trained and certified. They know what, when, and how to handle any job. It gets done efficiently and quickly by a team of experts. So for tree trimming, removal, stump grinding, and emergency services, forget any name other than Custom Tree Surgeons. There is no job they can't do better. Go to our website, customtreesurgeons.com. That's customtreesurgeons.com. And let them show you how the job is supposed to get done. When you think about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Prime Roofing is Jacksonville's local contractor that manufactures, fabricates, and installs metal roofs. Schedule today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. 
See the world through the eyes of a linebacker. I tell it like I see it, and I see it like a middle linebacker. Tom McManus joins Jaguars today every Friday morning. Period. Brought to you by Renewal by Anderson Windows and Doors on 1010XL. Hey, Glenn here with B&B Oil. Do you have equipment that needs fuel? We can service any size event from a small wedding with a generator in a tight spot to large construction sites with multiple pieces of large equipment. We deliver all types of fuel and lubricants. We also have fuel tanks from 200 gallons to 2,000 gallons. And we can get larger if needed. So give us a call today or find us online at bb-oil.com. bb-oil.com. Any adventure, any task, any time. There's a CF Moto Utility ATV or UTV for any rider. See the full lineup at Ride Now Beach Boulevard. Venture seekers can start with the trail tested capability and comfort of the Sea Force lineup. For the ultimate in UTV performance, check out the Z Force 950. Find your utility ATV at Ride Now Beach Boulevard or online at cfmotousa.com. ATVs are recommended for the use only by riders age 16 years and older. ATVs can be hazardous to operate. CF Moto recommends approved training course for safety and training information. It's Taylor Dahl from Helmets and Heels. You know, I've got to tell you about an amazing experience I had recently. I'm moving, which most of you know can be a very stressful time. I had to get my carpets cleaned, so of course, I called up Zero Res, and let me tell you, they did not disappoint. Zero Res came in and worked their magic, leaving my carpets looking brand new. If you want impeccable service and a great deal, it saved me time, made my move a bit easier, and was less than if I took that apartment cleaning fee. Zero Res, spelled backward or forwards, is the right way to clean. Folks, the First Coast has voted. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute is proud to be chosen as Bold City's best in four categories. Best Orthopedic Practice, Physical Therapy, Pain Management, and Foot Care Clinic. For the last 30 years, JOI has continually strived for the highest level of orthopedic surgery and rehab care. As the needs of the community evolve, so will they. That's why coaches, parents, and athletes choose JOI. Call them at JOI2000 or visit JOI.net. JOI, where the pros go. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation. Light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. This is Joe C. from XL Primetime and stoked to crank up the 9 after 5 once again at the Golf Club of Southampton. Every Wednesday, a little after 5, the gang at Southampton will be hosting us with a new game, and I'm inviting you to be a part of it. Now, through the summer stretch, break up the week with a little hump day fun every Wednesday. Call 287-PLAY to get on the tee sheet. There'll be food afterwards and prizes, including playing for a membership at the Golf Club of Southampton. Call 287-PLAY and hit the tee with Joe C. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Jaguars today on 1010XL. You know, Jags are casting a pretty wide net, it appears, uh, with the cornerback position in terms of visits. I saw Neil O'Brien say this morning, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Nate Wiggins have been in uh, for top 30 visits this week with the Jags. I mean, you get 30 in-person visits mm-hmm. that you can bring in a guy, and it doesn't have to be a guy you're considering with the first round, obviously. It could be anyone, but you want to learn more about that position. They've done it uh, with a number of corners at a number of levels as well, apparently. And so, look, if you find the traits you're looking for, Tony, I don't put it past the Jags to say, hey, you know what? Wide receivers the top priority. Maybe there's a big body lineman, offense or defense in round two. Maybe even in round three, you go edge rush because the right guy's there. And you spend a couple of later picks on the cornerback position. It's going to happen at one of these positions that it doesn't get addressed early because you simply can't address them all early unless you move around the draft board a lot. And that's, I suppose, always a possibility. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I... I you need to do your due diligence on the top guys to see if they're worth taking there because even signing Ronald Darby, I think the Jags internally know that that's not the ideal circumstance. You got an off-injured guy who's a veteran on a short-term deal. Let's find 
a young, cheap, set it and forget it guy opposite Tyson Campbell, particularly if they're going to sign Tyson Campbell to an extension and tie up some money in that cornerback room, you're going to have to have some cheap labor over there. Yeah, I saw Demetrius Harvey tweeting out this morning about the long term players that the Jags have at wide receiver compared to the long term, you know, ramifications mm-hmm. for the things they could do at corner. And corner is way more thin than wide receiver is going into the future. That doesn't mean that I don't think wide receiver can be in the middle of what they're thinking about at 17, right? It doesn't mean you remove that. But if you're talking about which is the bigger need because of what the future looks like at the position on the roster right now, I do think corner pretty easily wins that argument given what it looks like for the football team beyond this season. It's kind of the same thing at offensive tackle. You know, these kind of things that we've talked about before, but it's not that they don't have enough bodies to play right now necessarily at corner, but they don't have a whole lot of bodies that are on the roster in 2025 at corner right now. And so they're going to have to figure out what all that's going to look like, extend, you know, extend Tyson Campbell, if that's something that they want to do. All these different areas where they're going to have to go. And yeah, I still think corner and wide receiver are the two positions I have circled in my mind Mm -hmm. for what I would expect the Jags to do at 17. But I do... Given all these other things, I do have corners slightly ahead of wide receiver in my head unless one of those top three wide receivers happens to become available to me. Yeah, and part of it, too, is the dynamic of I know maybe they internally don't feel this or or not doing it, but I I think it's human nature. you got to wonder, you know, okay, 9-8, 9-8, Shad Khan's seemingly fine, back-to-back winning seasons. What if Mm -hmm. you take a step back this year? What if you do go 7-10 and this year? Are they safe? Is Trent Baalke safe? So right. when you look at, okay, yes, there's some attention being paid to how is this going to work a year, two years, three years down the line. Also needs to be a lot of attention paid to how are we going to perform right now, particularly as we continue sure. to develop our franchise quarterback at the position. So what, you know, well, okay, we may have a few more wide receivers under contract for another extra year or whatever. All that can change in one-off mm-hmm. season anyway, right? You go out and sign a free agent corner. We sign Tyson Campbell to a long-term extension. You draft one or two this year, and that can flip in a big hurry. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you can see, you know, we just went through Daniel Jeremiah's list. Yeah. Right, of where he's got these guys ranked. And it's pretty clear that the top three wide receivers in this year's draft are ahead of any of the corners. Right, like they're they're up there ahead of any of those corners. You have, you know, some guys that are right there around that ten to fifteen range in the cornerback spot, but there's not a whole lot of those fourth wide receivers that are ahead of any of the you know the top two or three corners. No, you know, in this draft class, and there is the possibility that when the Jags go on the clock, they could all be available. Right, It's not that I expect that no corners come off before they pick necessarily, but there is the possibility that no corners come off the board before they're picking and three wide receivers are gone. So, yeah, I feel better about what might be the top corner in this year's draft class than I do the fourth wide receiver in Brian Thomas Jr. or whoever you think that might be. But you also have to consider to some degree that if all the top corners are available, even though you might get a run on them, that means – they're all available. Sure. Right? And so at the 48th pick, you might have better corners staring you in the face than you otherwise might have, right? And maybe. Yeah. And while, yes, there's a deep, a deep draft with, you know, they're saying 14 fitable, 15 draftable wide receivers in mm-hmm. the first two rounds. Well, they may be draftable. They may not fit what your vision is, what you need them, what role. You know what I mean? So out yeah. of those 14, maybe six or seven fit you really well and three of them are going to be off the board in the top 10 picks so mm-hmm. maybe you're down to like four guys out of that other group that you'd really love maybe you get one at 17 maybe you get one at 48 maybe you don't get one at all in the first couple of rounds uh looking at these other couple of mocks before we get too far afield here uh speaking of field yates over at espn did a two round today he also had terry and arnold going to the jags with okay. the 17th pick and he's the one he had him just like Jeremiah has him ranked ninth overall. Yes. If the Jags have anything similar and Terry and Arnold's there, they're going to take Terry and Arnold Easy. or, or Quinion Mitchell yeah. if he is the guy that maybe they have ranked that highly. And then again, Tony, if, you know, Jared Verse is there 
and they have him ranked ninth. If they have somebody ranked in the top 10 and he's staring at them at 17, chances are they're not going to have multiple guys that they have ranked in the top 10. The only chance that it could be going that way is maybe five quarterbacks do go. Yeah. And then all it takes is 12 position players outside a quarterback to get to your pick. And you know, three of those are wide receivers. Right. You, so, but even if they're yeah. in your top 10, yeah. those other nine guys, well, everyone's boards are going to be slightly different. You may have a top 10 player sitting there. You may have a couple, mm-hmm. but if it falls this way and it's a position of need like corner and you do have a top 10 grade on them, there's not going to be a trade back. Easy. Right, yeah. It's going to be an easy pick and everyone's going to be happy. And mm-hmm. uh, he said uh, the Jags had a couple of notable needs this offseason at center and cornerback. But because they added steady veteran Mitch Morse on a two-year deal to man the middle of the offensive line, cornerback will take center stage. And uh, Arnold's ranked much higher on his board than where he goes in this, but the run on offensive positions could help the Jags get a standout on the other side of the ball. Aggressive, awesome ball skills, fearless in coverage, really shows good instincts, all of which contributed to a huge 2023 season that included five interceptions. Okay, fine. Nobody's going to be bothered by Terry and Arnold. No. Being picked there. Some will. Mm-hmm. I say nobody. Vast majority of people will not mm-hmm. be bothered by it, right? It's always going to be somebody bothered by everything. This one in the second round, Marshall Nealand visited the Jags because he is. He did. Did it? Okay. He is, uh, he is mocked by Field Yates to the Jags with the 48th pick. He's also mocked over at Pro Football Network to the Jags with the 48th pick, an edge rusher out of Western Michigan. As uh, Field Yates wrote, they have two frontline pass rushers in Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker combining for 27 and a half sacks. Depth is critical here. Allen's set to play on the franchise tag. Nealon has exceptionally powerful hands and overall strength to get home off the edge. All that may be true, mm-hmm. and he may be fantastic. And But the immediate reaction, if you take a corner and then you take a Western Michigan edge rusher in round two, my guess is going to be, what the hell are we doing? Mm-hmm. Right? Where's the big lineman? I mean, <laughs> edge rusher. Kind of in that category. But where's the D tackle? Where's the offensive line? Where is the wide receiver? Mm-hmm. Where's the second quarter? Could you see him taking two back to back? That'd be a lot. That'd be a lot. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't rule it out completely. I'd, I'd be surprised rule it, if I'd it probably happened. rule it out if they really think they're going to get it done with Tyson Campbell. Yeah, you know, and like, they they endeavor to, or they want to, and they think that that's where that's going to end up. I am generally okay with positions like that you know edge and corner and wide receiver like there are positions that I think it doesn't all have to be determined by the number of bodies that you have necessarily if you trust your grade on a player and if they take a guy in the first round in the second second round their highest graded player is a corner again I'm okay with it Right, if that's the direction that they decide to go. Yeah, I'd be surprised. I'd, I'd be th- surprised if that's how it works out too. But right, that's uh, that's what it would tell me. This is obviously the top graded guy on their board, especially signing Darnell Savage and telling us they think he's going to be able to play nickel and yeah. having Ronald Darby in the mix. And you do have a couple of young guys on the back end of the roster as well. Uh, and if you were really spending first round draft capital there, I'm going to say we're making an easy pivot off of that. Um, before we get to the seven-round mock, why don't you take us on an easy look around the rest of the National Football League? Now, Gems Around the NFL, brought to you by Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jack's Beach. Houston is signed cornerback Miles Bar- Bryant. Uh, Indianapolis is bringing back safety Julian Blackman on a one-year deal. Blackman was a third-round pick in Indy in 2020, spent most of his four seasons there as a starter, including starting all 15 games he played in last year with 88 tackles and eight pass defensed. Seattle is signing former Jaguars wide receiver LaVisca Chenault. Chenault was a second-round pick here in 2022, or 2020, but was traded to Carolina there before the 2022 season where he played the last couple of years. The Kansas City Chiefs are bringing back their own 2020 first-round draft pick, running back Clyde Edwards-Alaire on a one-year deal. The Chiefs also had running back J.K. Dobbins in for a visit on Tuesday. Defensive tackle Eddie Goldman, who hasn't played in the game since 2021, is coming out of retirement to sign a one-year deal with the Falcons. Goldman signed with Atlanta in 2022, but retired before the season. 
then unretired and signed with Atlanta before the 2023 season, but was placed on the reserve slash left squad list ahead of training camp. Maybe the third time will be the charm for the Falcons to get Goldman on the field in 2024. And cornerback Cooper DeGene has let NFL teams know that he has been cleared for football activity. Will be doing a full workout next week for teams. DeGene suffered a fractured fibula in November. All right, thank you, Tone. Uh, let's run through the seven-round mock over a Pro Football Network here. Uh, I'll go through the picks before it gets to the Jags, and then we'll just rip through the Jags selections. And you give me kind of thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, whether or not – you don't have to know the prospect, love the prospect, just mm-hmm. whether you think they're doing a good job addressing uh, positions. Obviously, Caleb Williams first. Uh, Drake May in this one going to Washington. Jane Daniels to New England. Pick your poison. J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings in a trade up to Arizona. Stop me if you've heard some kind of uh, permutation of that. I like this. Joe Alt going to the Chargers. I like that because he's frequently mocked to Tennessee, and that would at least make Tennessee, Tennessee pivot. Uh, they trade down in this, as a matter of fact. Marvin Harrison to the Giants at six. Uh, then Arizona um, traded up after Moving giving back, up. They went back, they went back okay. to 11 and then gave up 11 and 66. So, if I'm the Titans, I'd take 11 and 66 all freaking day mm-hmm. in this draft. Um, so did they go offensive tackle at 11? They do. They go yeah. with uh, Fashanu there. Malik Neighbors then goes to the Cardinals at seven. Adunze goes to the Falcons at eight. So there goes your dream okay. about trading up. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dallas Turner to the Bears, uh, the edge rusher. Uh, Brock Bowers to the Jets. That's becoming a frequent selection there. Uh, Olu Fashanu, the tackle out of Penn State to the Titans. Then the Eagles trade up and get Troy Falatanu, the offensive lineman out of Washington, mm-hmm. uh, after Fashanu goes off the board. So uh, there you get three tackles. Terry and Arnold to the Raiders. Tali Fwanga, another offensive lineman out of Oregon State, going to the Saints. Amarius Mims to the Cowboys on a trade up. So this one is projecting the offensive line. In a, I get well, you know, honestly, it was quarterback started the trade up, then receiver. And, but there have been multiple trade-ups for offensive line in this. Mm-hmm. And, again, it could come down to how you, the individual team, evaluates these players. Um, Seattle takes Jared Verse in this, and then the Jags get Quinion Mitchell. Okay. And I don't think anybody's going to be upset oh, yeah. too much with that. Um, if the board falls this way, <clears throat> should not escape the clutches of the Jaguars, according to Pro Football Network, uh, blah, 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 all the things about Mitchell, big, fluid movement, agility, has the ability to be a shutdown corner. Okay. So, uh, that's first round. Second round for the Jags. Uh, I mentioned Marshawn Nealand, edge rusher out of Western Michigan. And I love this. Marshawn Nealand just feels like a Trent Baalke pick, is what they said. Uh, that right there is going to get. What they mean by that? Teal, well, it's going to get Teal Nation to turn against them. What it means is he's got traits. He's got measurables. Mm-hmm. He may not have fulfilled that potential yet. But Balky sees something, a raw talent in this guy. Uh, that's exactly what they're talking about. 6'3", 267, and a relative athletic score uh, of over 9.5 at, on a 10-point scale. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, raw but promising prospect. Man, <laughs> 48, I don't want raw. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm sorry. Maybe he's going to turn out to be great. So I'm giving that at best a thumb sideways. Uh, Brandon Coleman, guard out of TCU, Tony. Uh, with the 96th pick. Yeah. Imposing length for yep. a guard. Yep. 6'4", 313. Uh, I, I like that a bunch. Yeah. I've seen him, you know, on lists of, you know, different spots doing the top interior linemen. Mm-hmm. I've seen him, you know, in that five, six, seven range yes. a lot. You know, so, you. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, the Jacks still haven't dressed wide receiver. That is until they select Luke McCaffrey at Rice. How do you feel about McCaffrey? I don't know much about McCaffrey. I don't yeah. Uh, uh, is he related to McCaffrey? Yes. Okay. It's, then. His, it's his brother, Let's I go. believe, isn't it? Okay. I yeah. think it's his little brother. Um, Gabe Hall, defensive tackle out of Baylor, like the position. Can't mm-hmm. break down a whole bunch of Gabe Hall's game. That's no, with yeah. the 116th pick. So the, they had those two picks within three selections yeah. in round four. So McCaffrey and Hall. So in this, so far, they've addressed corner, edge rush, offensive guard, wide receiver, defensive tackle. I'll give them – Big marks for not deviating from what we need around these parts. Now, we get into the later stages. Tip Ryman, tight end, Illinois. Okay. All right. Don't know a thing about him. 
does Josiah DeGuara make this an unnecessary pick, let's hope? <laughs> uh, Eric Watts, edge rusher out of UConn, so we're doubling down on the edge mm-hmm. here with pick 213. And then pick 237, Dylan Johnson, running back, Washington. No okay. thank you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need a running back. I don't need a running back for the third straight year with a draft pick. I'll say this. If they hit those first five picks mm-hmm. and they were good players, the last three, you're not going to care that much. Sure. You'll care in the moment. You'll be like, what are we doing drafting a running back? Well, you could draft whomever you like at that point, and that guy probably doesn't make the football team. Yeah. You know, frankly. Right? So, uh, anyway, just one person's opinion, but I do think they did a good job with those first five selections of nailing Jaguar needs. It gets a little silly when you get to the end here. Um, uh, uh, do we need a fourth or fifth tight end on this team? Right. I know special teams kickoff coverage is going to be critical now, Tone. Yeah. But McCaffrey caught 13 touchdowns last year. No, um, a lot of people like Luke yeah. McCaffrey, you know. Um, and again, you're not going to, you can't have it all. You can't have Brian Thomas and Terry and Arnold or mm-hmm. Quinion Mitchell. You only get one of those type of guys, it appears. So, anyway, um, you can check that out over at ProFootballNetwork.com. We'll check out the senior writer. John Ozier joins us next, and uh, he will uh, join us for a conversation with Tony Pauline coming up in hour number two, about 25 minutes from now, breaking down this year's NFL draft. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Helping you over the hump. Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Weight Loss Wednesday continues from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios on 1010XL. This is Mark Brunel. This is Steve Smith from the New York Giants. This is Rocky Blyer, former Pittsburgh Steeler and four-time Super Bowl champion. You're listening to 1010XL. 1010XL. 92.5 FM. Want to play golf and help raise some money for scholarships at the same time? Join the Clay County Gator Club at their 24th annual scholarship golf tournament presented by Walker Footings, Sunday, April 21st. To register, go to claygators.com. Osprey fans, giving day at the University of North Florida ends at noon. From athletics to scholarships, lend your support today. No gift is too small. Swoop and support the Ospreys. Visit givingday.unf.edu or call 904-620-1672. It's tune-up time, and Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, wants to partner with you for a cool summer season. Tune up your AC unit right now so it's running at peak performance when you need it most. Just call 777-4300 and order a tune-up for just 59 bucks. Keep your unit humming at optimal level. Log on to FloridaHomeAC.com and take advantage of their savings. Keep cool with Florida Home AC. That's 777-4300. The flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes. And further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800 348 269 800 348 Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. What makes a Honda certified pre-owned vehicle so special? 182-point inspection, 24-7 roadside assistance, first-year free oil changes, and a 7-year, 100,000-mile warranty for carefree driving back by American Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today. Attention veterans, if you have a VA loan, you need to listen to this, especially if your current rate is higher than 6.5%. Now is the time to take advantage of the federal government's VA Streamline Refinance Program. With my friends at Loan Pronto, you can. Go to LoanPronto.com. Prosser here, and Loan Pronto has fixed rate APRs in the five. You can drop your rate now. Lower your payment with no income documentation and no appraisal. Do it at LoanPronto.com. Their all-digital platform makes it easy. They can even cover your closing costs. 
If you need cash now, Loan Pronto can get you up to 100% of your home value. You can pay off all your credit cards or other debt and save as much as $1,000 a month. Call Loan Pronto now at 904-999-1508 or get a 30-second rate quote at LoanPronto.com. Ask about streamlined VA loans, no income doc, and no appraisal. Loan Pronto, 999-1508 or LoanPronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. Brought to you by Kuhn Flowers. The Florida Gators out hit the Florida A&M Rattlers to carry in the midweek win 10-7. Brody Donay hit two home runs for the first time as a Gator. His first homer was a three-run home run in the third inning, giving the Gators the lead. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan broke down the five home runs that brought them the win. Credit Cade for hitting a three-run homer in the first, kind of gets right back there, and then and then obviously you know Brody Donay had a really good day at the plate uh, with two home runs and four RBIs, and Cade hit you know um, like I said the three-run homer in the first. That kind of that kind of got us going a little bit, obviously, offensively. It was good to see Colby Shelton get one, too, and then obviously Cags hit another one. But I thought the bullpen, for the most part, did you know did a nice job. And the most important thing is we got a midweek win. It's 75 degrees at 11 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. Ten Ten XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call three nine six fifty five fifty five Jacksonville. Oh no! With Jaguars.com's John Osher, brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. On Ten Ten XL. Well, CJ Stroud's fantasy stock just went up a notch. According to Adam Schefter, the Buffalo Bills are finalizing a trade to send four-time Pro Bowl wide receiver Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans for draft pick compensation. Get this. The Bills will get a 2025 second-round pick via Minnesota. So the Vikings pick, which the Texans own next year. And the Texans receive Stephon Diggs a sixth-round pick, and a fifth-round pick. So they give up a second-rounder a year from now, get digs in a sixth this year, and also get a fifth-rounder next year as well. And obviously, we'll have to pay him. And let's hope that Stephon Diggs brings whatever petulant headaches with him to Houston. But if you want to see what it looks like for a team to go all in on a quarterback on a rookie contract, that's exactly what the Texans are doing right now I mean they have two rising young players at wide receiver Nico Collins and Tank Dell Tank Dell was phenomenal last year when he was healthy as a rookie Nico Collins really good player yeah now they're the second and third receivers you would presume at least behind Stephon Diggs uh how about that that is massive Terry and Arnold, Obviously, come on it, down. It tells you everything you need to know about how complicated the situation was for Diggs and Buffalo you know, like how bad it had become for whatever that was going to be with the relationship between him and quarterback and team and all those different things. Like, it's they felt it was time. Look, if we can get something, let's move on from whatever this is and, and we'll barely, see how that works. They barely got anything except getting rid of. Right. I mean, well, they barely used him right. once they made the coordinator Back switch the year, last yeah. year, right? Like, yeah. he didn't have a 100-yard game after week six, I don't think. That, that's not to say – He's not a good player or, or anything sure. like that. But, he, look, here's the thing. He will wear out his welcome in Houston, but it won't be this year. Right. Right? He'll be on his good behavior, get a new deal, he's no state income tax down there, so he'll actually make a little bit more money than he would have otherwise. And who knows if they adjust his deal and give him some whatever, whatever. And, uh, I mean, the guy could play, but he also – has probably a higher opinion of himself than anybody else does. So if, if that's oh, he one likes way Steph. Put it. he loves him some Steph, <laughs> and you know he talked his way out of Minnesota. Now he, he went played with Josh Allen, and I guess that's not good enough, right? You know, and now he's going to jump into the next yep. hot thing with C.J. Stroud. I mean, the the Jaguars fans who are panicking uh, often all in with. Uh, veteran guys like this uh, isn't always the answer. 
So it's that's not, what you hope for. It's not always the answer. Right. But would you take Stephon Diggs in your wide receiver sure. room right I now mean, if you could afford it? I would no too. Yeah. You know? And uh, if you're C.J. Stroud, you think he's beaming ear to ear right now? I, I would right. imagine he is. You know? So, hey, look, uh, in addition to many other additions they've made this offseason, headlined by Daniil Hunter uh, coming to Houston, that, that team will be probably – Trying to think back, was anyone picking anyone but Jacksonville to win the AFC South last year? It's going to yeah, be very, very similar. similar. Very though. similar. I mean, yeah, everyone's I mean, going to pick Houston. I think to win you'll this probably division. get a little more divisiveness, but not much. I mean, Houston on paper will look like a favorite. Oh, big time. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think you'll, you'll uh, 99% across the board, mm-hmm. uh, it'll be Houston to win the AFC South. Now, Schefter is the only one who's reporting this, not been picked up that I've seen, but I, I mean, if Schefter is reporting it, I'm going to presume that this Rappaport exactly has to. Rappaport has picked it up. Yeah. Okay. So it, it seemed like Schefter was the first yeah, one to have it. Pretty high hit rate. Whatever. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Usually, because they're he's being fed those sure. stories, yeah. right? Um, right. Uh, anyway, so there you have it. Uh, you know. Corner, John, at 17. Can I interest you in a corner? <laughs> well, I thought that I thought it was going to be corner anyway, and I think. It wouldn't surprise me if it's corner in in two of the first, you know, I say day two, but into the fourth round. It wouldn't surprise me if you, if, if you went corner twice with guys who you think can play pretty quickly. I could see a later, like we were just talking about before you came in, welcome in John Osher, by oh. the way, of Jaguars.com, uh, the idea of going corner at 17 and 48, just if it happened to fall that uh-huh. way. That I don't love that idea. I don't man. love it, but. You're I mean, sort of I mean, in that situation. Well, presuming that Tyson Campbell is in your future plans, I don't love it. And yeah, I'm know? not sure you can presume that, though. Well, I'm. they know more about yeah. that than we do. They know right. probably what they're willing sure. to spend, what it's going to take to bring it back, what their plans are in terms of getting something done with Josh Allen and the availability of the franchise tag and all that. Yeah, I'm I think not they like Tyson back. I think if he's 11 games, if he repeats this past season, I, I don't right. think you can bring him back. For that, not it, for the massive right. Yeah, so I think that's a very uh, iffy, and therefore you've got, you know, two potentially. You don't have any idea what your future is at cornerback right now, and it seems in this league right now you can use four that can play, maybe more. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's a real possibility for corner early, unless they really, really believe in in uh, Christian Braswell, who they like but didn't see it last year. So right. much like Cooper Hodges' situation. You like it, but can you trust it going into a season yet? I don't know. Part of it, you know, the dynamic too is, I mean, I know like wide receivers deep, Tony and I were talking about it, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean even if there are 15 draftable wide receivers, whatever that means, they're all draftable Sure, if someone selects them, but 15 guys that you wouldn't look cross-eyed at if they went in the top 64 uh, picks or so, that doesn't mean the Jags will rate 15 guys out of that group as being draftable at either pick 17 or 48. Right. Yeah, I uh, I would be – right now I would be very surprised if it's not a corner, which means I'd be surprised if it's a receiver because uh, I think the receiver class is such – and their situation receiver is such, it just feels to me like it's more of a need a corner. But they may – look at the corner class and think we can get a starter at 48 and look at it sort of in reverse of what I'm talking right. about. Right. Well, and that's the thing too, you know, we're looking at some scenarios where every corner is available at 17, like all of them. That, right. And you may say, well, I got the chance to get the best one, but you may also say, well, that means probably one or two more available yeah. at 48 than I thought. Yeah. You, know, you can't know that right. for sure. There could be that run that, that all of a sudden starts and on that position. That we'll never know going in because that's, what's on their draft board. Those are their Their scenarios. board and everyone else's draft board, right. for that matter. But theirs may be different. So Sure uh, it might. Yeah. You know, but it's uh, like, here's the thing. Corner's such a need mm-hmm. for the state. And it, granted, it's a, it's, it's a little bit more of a need now when you add a multiple-time Pro Bowl receiver to one of your division rivals. Sure. It is. And that doesn't mean that'll be the highest-graded player. Will the Jags, right. if, if they like, like, they might like, Let's say, hypothetically, they like Brian Thomas one iota more mm-hmm. than the next three corners, whatever. Are they staying true to the board? Yeah. It's not like 
They've so got a true NFL one on this team. You know, that guy right. that becomes Trevor Lawrence. Like, you could look at Houston and say, well, C.J. Stroud and Nico Collins, and he had tanked out. Well, now he's got the vet to go with it, who's right. shown he can be an NFL one. I don't know if you look at Stephon Diggs, Tony, at this point and say he's as terrifying as he was three years ago. No. But um, still a pro bowler. You know, the last four years there in Buffalo, he was a first-team All-Pro four seasons ago. He was a second-team All-Pro two years ago. Right. You know, there in Buffalo. And, you know, we were having the conversation just a few days ago off of the the talk with Fred Taylor. The question being asked, would you rather have, you know, the five-time Pro Bowl wide receiver or the five-time Pro Bowl corner? Mm -hmm. The Houston Texans just traded for the five-time Pro Bowl wide receiver. You know, that's what they did. Now, it's not Tyreek Hill level of wide receiver at this point in his career, but I think there is still the potential for the next year or two for Stephon Diggs to still be playing at a Pro Bowl level in the AFC, and Houston landed him, and they didn't have to give up a whole lot to do it, right? Not very much at all. A second-round pick next Next year. Next year, and they get two late picks coming back. Right, like it is... I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about how complicated that situation was with Diggs and Buffalo. Sure, and, you, and you're paying him, too. That's a big part of it. It's not no like doubt. you're getting a rookie-contracted player on that second-round pick. I think Houston is likely to get Diggs on what would be the best behavior for Diggs for at least a year. That's what I'm saying, too. Right. I, don't, I don't think he becomes a problem this year. Right, and I think beyond that, who knows what's going to happen with all this, but as far as if you're giving up a pick next year and getting two late-round picks back this year for a year of digs, fine. Right, Houston in this situation there, why wouldn't that be a good trade for Houston to make at this point in their process? Well, I hope it works out terribly for them, but I don't think it's a bad move on part of Houston to make this kind of move. Well, it, it, even though they included a – what was it, a – Fourth and a fifth or a fifth and a sixth? Fifth and a sixth. Fifth and a sixth, right, yeah. in the deal. So it's not quite a second-round pick. If you think you're getting Brandon Ayuk, who's not a problem child, right. who's significantly younger than Stephon Diggs for the 48th pick in the draft, you're not. No. Right. You know, so you're not likely. I mean, I, the 48th pick, to me, is worth a lot more than Minnesota's second next year as well mm-hmm. because you're using it this year for one thing. And, you know, Minnesota, who's their quarterback, right? I mean, right. that you know, you could, that, you could easily – uh, we don't know where that pick's going to fall. Uh, it could go a number of different ways. Uh, I guess who the, who's in there now? Sam Darnold? Is that who they signed? They signed Darnold, like the placeholder. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's where we're at right now. Stephon Diggs, I guess, welcome to the AFC South. We had no problem with the one who's in Buffalo. We did pretty well against the Bills. Um, yeah. Different circumstance now in Different Houston. circumstance. He- He's dangerous. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. All right. Well, we got Tony Pauline coming up on the other side uh, to get into some of these corner prospects and wide receivers and a whole bunch of other stuff. Our first visit with Tony only three weeks out from the NFL draft for 2024. He'll join us from Sports Kedia on the other side with John Osier, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark. I'm Mike Dempsey. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL 92.5 FM. It's another Weight Loss Wednesday. Awaken 180 Weight Loss in the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios, where the pros go. Making your sports day last a little longer. That's all I wanted to know. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks a million. Go into the night with Rick Ballou. Amen, right? That's right, right? Yeah, yeah. Then it's Hacker After Dark. I know, it's amazing. Evenings on 1010XL. Hey there, Jacksonville. With scorching temperatures just around the corner, it's crucial to ensure your AC is blowing nice and cool. Duck Duck Air Conditioning is here to keep you comfortable all summer long. But don't wait until the heat gets here. Our service techs are ready right now to handle any cooling issues you may have at your home or business. Call Duck Duck AC today at 904-862-6769 to schedule. That's 904-862-6769. Duck Duck Air Conditioning, online at duckduckac.com. If you are having problems related to selling your home, here's your solution. You just have not discovered ChadAndSandy.com. That's ChadAndSandy.com. Listen, maybe the problem is you need more space for your office or growing family, or perhaps you're worried about settling for less money with a lowball instant offer. We've got one guarantee here that always rings true. Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. It's as simple as that. So you need to call 904-414-6200 or go to chadandsandy.com like Jonathan and Mount Pleasant did. The only thing standing between me and my dream of traveling in my RV was the sale of my Mount Pleasant home. I heard Chad and Sandy on the radio and called 
crazy results. In just three days, I received multiple offers for full asking price. So you don't have the problems you think you do. You have solutions and promises with Chad and Sandy. Go to chadandsandy.com or call 904-414-6200 at chadandsandy.com. Hacker here. You know, there was a time when negative comments on social media about my weight just faded into the background. I got so used to seeing them. However, in just five weeks, everything has taken a 180. I now notice comments about my weight again because they're completely different. Thanks to dropping a whopping 40 pounds already with Awaken 180. People are noticing, noticing and rooting me on. It feels absolutely incredible. I'm diving back into clothes I haven't worn in 15 years, turning back time while losing five pounds a week. Thanks to Awaken 180 weight loss. I have a whole new outlook on life. I've been down other weight loss roads before, but nothing compares to this. The shift from not noticing the negative to embracing the positive has been profound. So what are you waiting for? Join me on this transformation with Awaken 180. Call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 or online at awaken180weightloss.com. We love talking sports on 1010XL, and I-9 Sports love giving kids the perfect way to grow up playing sports. Summer and fall registration is underway, and if you log on to i9sports.com, you'll see all they've got to offer for kids 3 and up. And don't forget to enter 1010 in the promo code for a discount on registration. Year-round sports all across the First Coast, from St. John's, Duval to Clay. Summer and fall registration open right now. Fort Family Field in Westside Middle or online at i9sports.com. Get your kids in the game with i9. Are your kids ready to play this summer? Come check out the Y. Summer is a time for kids to explore new things and expand the limits of their imagination. At the Y Summer Camp, every day is a new adventure. Kids can learn about STEM, arts and humanities, athletic sports, outdoor games, and more. Registration is now open, but space is limited, and spots are filling up quickly. Learn more and find your adventure at fcymca.org. Search Summer Day Camp. Frank Franchi, afternoons on 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Wondering what you're going to do for dinner tonight? Southern Steer Butcher is a full-service butcher that offers take-and-bake side options that are oven-ready. Now open in Ortega. For tasty tips and juicy breasts, choose Southern Steer Butcher. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260 Crab. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Everyone seems to be in a time crunch these days. Well, don't forget, you can always count on the cold case at Daly's. Always convenient, always cold. Whether it's the king of beers, Natty Light, Stella, or Cigar City, a Goose Island Bud Light Seltzer. Dash into Daly's and grab one to go. Mia here with a shout out to all property owners looking to spruce up your spaces for the spring. Window Gang's exterior cleaning services will remove stubborn stains, restore windows to a crystal clear shine, and ensure your gutters flow freely. Whether you own a home or business, Window Gang will transform your outdoor space. Call 262-7300 for a free estimate. Don't wait. Let Window Gang bring the sparkle back to your property today. That's 262-7300. Time now for a medical recap. A health and wellness tip from Jaguars head team physician, Dr. Kevin Kaplan. Regular movement is key to so many health benefits. Aim for at least 10,000 steps a day. Decide to only take the stairs if you're walking less than six floors. Never park in the first 10 spaces of the parking lot. Walk during your work breaks. Get up 10 minutes earlier in the morning and take a short, brisk walk before the chaos of the day starts. There are so many easy ways to stay active. Let's get moving, Jacksonville. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Oh no! With Jaguars.com's John Osher. Brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars on 1010XL. All right, Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, John Osher here with you, and uh, join now. 
Our man Tony Pauline, who, uh, if not the best, he's right there with uh, the best draft analysts in the business, uh, working with Sportskedia this year to give you his musings on the top prospects and uh, their values in the upcoming NFL draft, now three weeks and one day away from round one. Tony joins us here on 1010XL this morning. Good morning, Tony. How are you, man? Uh, well, I was getting concerned. I hadn't heard from you guys <laughs> in months. It's, it's April. I usually, we're usually talking in January. I like, know, bro. Get, I think, I, I'm doing okay. I think we were so depressed the way the season ended that, uh, you know, we, we just kind of put it off a little longer. But we're happy to have you here. Maybe we can get you a couple more times before we get the NFL draft uh, kicked off. But I just want to ask you, uh, over at Sports Kita, uh, where you're – putting out your content now when I look at the the 2024 draft big board is that all you or is that kind of a, a group process putting that together no that's all me so if you got problems with it lay it on me while I'm here. <laughs> I got no I got no problems with it man we're just trying to figure out what to do let me just ask you about one guy and this is not a guy specifically I want for the Jags but I see him ranked in your top 15 that's Chop Robinson out of Penn State yeah. the edge rusher right? Yeah. Tons of athletic profile, not a ton of production. Um, that scares the hell out of me. Why Why should I not be scared to take him in the top 15 picks or so? Well, well not a lot of production this year. I mean, the prior year, he was he was unstoppable. You got to remember, he had a bad concussion in that Ohio State game uh, about, about two-thirds of the way through the season. But you watch Chop Robinson, and I do have him rated higher earlier than, than most people. But the fact is, is he's an explosive guy that can come out of a three-point stance, can stand over tackle. He's not just a wide edge rusher. He's got a nice inside move. He, you know, he's more than just an edge rusher. He's a guy that can get out into space, pursue plays from the backside, make the tackle in space, drop off the line. Just so many things that he does well. Yeah, the production wasn't really there this year. They use them in a variety of different ways. They've got other players there on that in that Penn State defensive front seven. A lot of it had to do with that serious concussion that he uh, he suffered against Ohio State, and he came back and played, even though Penn State, for all intents and purposes, were, were out of the uh, Big Ten uh, equation for the Big Ten title after that game. I just love his upside, and you know the testing was off the charts at the combine. Tony, how do you differentiate between the top corners that what? would be available to the Jags at 17, Mitchell, Arnold, McKinstry, and the top wide receivers that are expected to be available to the Jags there at 17, maybe in Brian Thomas Jr. and Adonai Mitchell. Yeah, I think, you know, Quinnon Mitchell is a bigger, stronger, really good press cover corner. Terry and Arnold is a little bit smaller, was primarily a nickelback at uh, Alabama. I think both are really good. I think Quinnon Mitchell really since, in the whole pre-draft process, he was a good cornerback at Toledo for three years, but he's really stood out during the pre-draft process. Great senior bowl, terrific testing at the uh, Combine. Arnold has done well in what he's been able to do, not super fast, but excellent ball skills. I happen to like McKinstry a lot. Uh, ran four four seven at his pro day, even though he's got the Jones fracture. I think he's being underrated at this point in time, 5'11 and a half. Just about 200 pounds. That Jones fracture will determine, you know, a lot where he's going to be drafted if teams think it is a problem. As far as the receivers that are going to be available to uh, to the Jaguars, absolutely love Brian Thomas Jr. I think he's an underrated guy. Granted, one year of big production, but he was playing with Malik Neighbors there. Uh, I think if you look at the size, you look at the speed. He's just a fluid, graceful wideout that is good over the middle or down the seam soft, natural hands. Uh, Donnie Mitchell is a guy I also like. I like Mitchell. We watched him as a uh, true freshman at Georgia. You knew this guy had star potential. Kind of fell off in 2022 because he had an injury. Came back this year. Played reasonably really well for Texas that had a lot of pass catchers. Uh, besides, you know, Xavier Worthy, the tight end, uh, JT Saunders. They had Winnington, the other receiver. But, again, he's a lot like you – know, Thomas and Donnie Mitchell are a lot alike. Same, similar size, same speed, same playing style. They're more than just contested catch receivers. They're guys that can separate through the routes. They're guys that find the open spot on the field. And, you know, the size is enticing. Tony, John Ogier here. Good to talk to you again. Um, just want to ask you, I, I kind of think they're going corner. Uh, but what uh, – 
Sell me on the best offensive lineman that you think could be available at 17. In my recent mock, I had them taking Amarius Mims, the right tackle uh, from Georgia. And the reason I had him taking Mims is, number one, he was my highest rated a tackle at that point. Some people would say it could be J.C. Latham. I'm a little bit higher on Mims because I think he's more athletic. I think Latham's a little bit too big. And the thing with Mims is I think he solves two problems in the sense that he's a natural right tackle. And Anton Harrison, who they drafted last year and stuck at right tackle, I believe is better at left tackle. So if you draft Mims and you get past the, the Cam, once you get past Cam Robinson, I believe you'll have two outstanding tackles there. Uh, on the left and the right side. Could they take Jackson Powers Johnson at center after the uh, the move they made in free agency? Uh, unlikely, but, you know, it, it, Jackson Powers Johnson is going to go in that area. Uh, he's a guy who's a powerful center. He's a thinking man center. He's, he's a guy who played guard in 2022, did a good job, and came back and played center this year. Other guys, I mean, I don't think Fatanu of Washington is going to be there. I think, actually, Mims would probably be a better fit. And Tyler Guyton's going to be there, but he's a roll of the dice, the guy who's got all the talent in the world yet doesn't always play to it. Yeah, that'd be interesting, uh, having drafted his teammate last year in Anton Harrison, uh, reuniting those guys potentially on the Jaguars' offensive line. Tone, you know, in many years we've talked to you, the Jags were taking uh, a player in the top ten, and then occasionally they'd be down in the 20s. We're not usually right here in the middle of the draft, so we're looking at this with all the quarterbacks – that could come off the board, and I'd be surprised if at least four don't go in the top 16 picks uh, right now. What are the other positions you think we'll see the runs on here? Let's say four quarterbacks in the first 16. So there's 12 other spots. You've got all those big-time wide receivers, those offensive tackles we're talking about, the corners, the edge rushers. What positions are likely uh, to cause teams to go, I have to have a premier guy at this spot and jump up? Yeah, you kind of hit on it, and it's going to be an offensive-heavy draft. I mean, you say four quarterbacks in the top 16. It's going to be four quarterbacks likely in the top four, top five. Right. Uh, at, at the worst case, top six. So you're going to have a four quarterbacks go. You're going to have a lot of offensive tackles, you know, with Alt, with Fashanu. I mentioned uh, Fatanu, Fuega of Oregon State. You're going to have a bunch of receivers. I don't see – all that many, obviously, you're going to have Brock Bowers, the tight end from Georgia, who's going to be a top 10 pick. If he gets out of the top 10, he won't fall any further than 12, Denver. And then a couple of edge rushers, Jared Verse. I have Chop Robinson. Some people think Latu, although he's got some injury issues. Mm, I, I, you know, maybe Indianapolis, I think Indianapolis, that's when the first cornerback comes off the board. Is the drop-off bigger in your mind, Tony, from wide receiver or corner when you're going from 17 to 48? I think it's definitely cornerback. I think uh, they're gonna, they will be a lot of good receivers available uh, to the Jaguars in round two. I, I mean, you're talking about guys like Roman Wilson of Michigan. you got the pair, from, the pair of receivers from Washington, Jalen McMillan and Jalen Polk, uh, Keon Coleman of Florida State. Ricky Pearsall of Florida may be there. He may not be there. It, um, it, it'll basically be on the cusp. So they'll be able to get a good receiver in the second and even in the third round. Where with the cornerback position, I mean, you're looking at guys that aren't sure things. Maybe Kwame Lasseter of Georgia, Enos Rakestraw of Missouri, who's kind of falling down draft boards, TJ Tampa of Iowa State. They are good corners, but I think they've got more downside than any receiver that would be available to the Jaguars in round two. Talking here with Tony Pauline, Sportskeeda is where you'll find him, uh, sportskeeda.com. Tony, uh, a certain percentage of the Jaguar fan base wants them to make a bold move up into the top ten and target one of the top three receivers. I think it's highly unlikely, but for conversation's sake, you have Marvin Harrison Jr. and you've got Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbors. How closely do they compare to each other? And are they, you know, like what? What is the latest you could see? I suppose one of those guys falling to. Well, I'll, I'll answer the first question of the your last question first, and I think maybe a, a guy like Neighbors or Dunze gets to eleven. In my in the recent mock I did, I had the Minnesota Vikings trading up to the Arizona Cardinals at four. 
and then the Cardinals taking the last of those three off the board with the 11th selection. Now, there are different types of receivers. I mean, in Marvin Harrison, he's a bigger game-controlling receiver with soft, natural hands. I think he's made a lot of mistakes in the in the run up to the draft. Everybody said, you know, he's not going to run, he's not going to catch the ball, he's not going to run routes, and people stay rely on the tape. And I agree with that. But when you're telling people who are about to invest tens of millions of dollars in you and what is the biggest job interview of your life, you're not going to do what everyone else is doing. Uh, that's not a good thing. But still, he's an outstanding receiver who I think we had an off year because of terrible quarterback play at Ohio State this year. Malik Neighbors is the most more explosive of the three. I mean, he's a guy that can stretch it downfield. You saw it in the four three five that he ran uh, at Pro Day, and he was a fast receiver on the field. He's great running after the catch, much better running after the catch than Marvin Harrison Jr. Bit of a high maintenance guy. There's some question as to whether or not he would flourish in a big city. And, and Roma Dunze is sort of right in the middle. He's not. He's a game controlling receiver, but not as game controlling as. Marvin Harrison Jr. He is explosive. He is sneaky fast, though not as explosive or as fast as Malik Neighbors. But he's a guy who just competes. I mean, if you watch Washington last year when McMillan, their other receiver, went down with an injury, I mean, he took he took it he took over the show with Michael Penix. Basically, he's the reason. If you watch that Washington State game, why they got into the uh, playoffs because on the uh, oh, fourth and thirteen, whatever it was, he ran a reverse for twenty three yards. Just a high character polished receiver with outstanding size and great hands. And I'm gonna, I'll say this for the record. I, I believe Brian Thomas Jr. is very underrated. I think Brian Thomas Jr., if developed correctly, could turn out to be one of the receivers, one of the best receivers from this year's draft because he's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the upside potential. It's just that he played on the other side from Malik Neighbors, mm-hmm. and Jaden Daniels was obviously looking towards Malik Neighbors because that's who he was used to throwing to. If the Jags didn't draft anyone along the defensive front, whether that be at edge or defensive tackle in the first three rounds of the draft this year, who are some of your favorite players in this year's draft that you don't expect to be taken until day three? It's kind of a a thin year at the position, but, you know, you look in day three, guys, the middle of day three, sleeper by the name of Christian Boyd out of Northern Iowa, 6'2", 320 pounds was just dominant during three days of uh, Shrine Bowl practice, was a combine snub. Jordan Jefferson of LSU, a natural nose tackle type, who also shows some athleticism in this game. Six, two and a half, 313 pounds, was a guy who just got beat up on the inside of, uh, of the LSU line, but did it willingly so his teammates could make plays on the ball. It then showed a lot of dominance during the senior bowl. So I think those are two guys to look at in day three. Maybe later on down the line, Jaden Crumity of Mississippi State, athletic guy at six foot four, three hundred pounds, ran a four nine seven, moves very well around the field. Uh, Tone, let's wrap up with this one, and uh, maybe we can catch up with you again next week as we get a little bit closer. But uh, in your most recent mock, and we understand mocks are going to change, and they're representative of a moment in time and all that. But you had the Jags in the second round after taking Mims out of Georgia in round one taking a Florida State wide receiver in round two, but it wasn't the one most people would suspect. It was Johnny Wilson, and you didn't have Keon Coleman in your two-round mock. Are you hearing, like, is he sliding in in evaluators' opinions or maybe not as well thought of as uh, some of the public think? Like, I I haven't seen anybody else suggest Wilson would go ahead of Coleman in this year's draft. Well, I think, number one, uh, Coleman was a bit overrated to begin with. I mean, he, you know, people love the highlights. Six three and a half, two hundred thirteen 213 pounds, made a lot of tough catches, going up with the crowd, coming down with the ball. But again, this is a projection to the next level. And Keon Coleman ran 4.61 at the combine. He never ran the shuttles. And he really hasn't proven that he's anything more than a contested catch sort of receiver. And you've got to do more than that in the NFL. Now, I do have a second round grade on Keon, Col- on Keon Coleman. I, I do have uh, teammate, his teammate rated slightly higher, Johnny Wilson, who ran in the four fives, who has got, I believe, better hands. The thing about Johnny Wilson is a lot of people think he could be a tight end at the next level, 235 pounds, 6'6". He's going to get bigger before he, gets, uh, before he slims down. But I still think he is a better natural receiver than Keon Coleman. He's a little bit faster. He's a little bit quicker. And again, 
you know, people love to watch those highlight reel films, Keon Coleman making those great catches. But you got to do more than be a contested catch receiver on Sunday if you're going to be an early pick. I mean, Jordan Addison a year ago, mid first round choice, six one, barely 180 pounds, ran a four five five. Yet he can separate. You know, he can get he can get free consistently. It's more about just you know beating down opponents to come away with the reception. All right, uh, Tony Pauline, a man who always uh, marches to the beat of his own opinions, and that's why we love him so much. Uh, Tony can be found at Sports. Keita, sports, K-E-E-D-A dot com. And, of course, on Twitter or X, at Tony Pauline, where he's got links to all his most recent work up, including his two-round mock, which you can check out uh, what he's got teams doing other than the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tony, all the best. Sorry it's been a little while reconnecting, but uh, hopefully we'll have a nice finishing stretch between now and the NFL draft. Thanks for having me. Hopefully we'll speak soon. You got it, buddy. There he goes, Tony Pauline, <laughs> sports, dot com. It's his new home but but still one of the brightest draft minds out there i have not yeah, seen johnny best. wilson ahead of Fantastic. Keon coleman in anybody's uh evaluation projection anything mm-hmm. i had neither but his reasoning sound i mean if you can't separate uh i, I like his reasoning on that no it, right it and like and make and we, that's the thing we don't know when and i i'm trying to be careful when using that terminology with him like guys rising up and down boards sure Really not happening that much. Right. It's just that sometimes we find out where guys were all along right. on team sports, and then all of a sudden the pundits will say, "I went back to review the film, right. and on a further evaluation, player is usually a guy that that people who have heard of who's not as good as people think." Correct, <laughs> and then they find out that people think he's not as good as they think, right. and then all of a sudden he's falling. It's falling on yes, draft boards. Uh, that's how it goes. Yeah. Uh, Tony Pauline, great stuff uh, from Sports Kita. So go check him out there as well. Uh, we'll take a final time. I'll come back and take a look at today's question of the day. Who's the guy you think the Jags might take at 17, but really hope they don't? We'll do that next. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Jaguars Today from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. It's a weight loss Wednesday on 1010XL. Awaken 180 weight loss. Your long-term solution for weight loss. I'm Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski. He wins. And you're listening to 1010XL, Jack Sports Radio. At Honda, we appreciate all the comparisons to other vehicles. And no matter how many times they compare their vehicles to a Honda, only a Honda is a Honda. Remember, value, quality, safety. There is no substitute. Visit your local Honda dealer now and experience the difference. Nick and here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Leon Sursa here, Jaguar legend and three-time national champion. Are you ready to elevate your game and dominate on the gridiron? Our elite offensive line camp is designed for young athletes who aspire to push their limits, define their skills, and become the very best. It's called the Lineman Life. Sunday, April 14th, D1 training on Beach Boulevard. Whether you are aiming to make a starting lineup or a college scholarship, this camp is for you. Spots are limited, so secure your spot now. Go to eventbrite.com, the Lineman Life dash offensive line camp. Enter promo code 1010 and get $25 off. Greatness awaits. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. It's tune-up time, and Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, wants to partner with you for a cool summer season. Tune up your AC unit right now so it's running at peak performance when you need it most. 
Just call 777-4300 and order a tune-up for just 59 bucks. Keep your unit humming at optimal level. Log on to FloridaHomeAC.com and take advantage of their savings. Keep cool with Florida Home AC. That's 777-4300. There are three certainties in life, death, taxes, and if you stay in your home long enough, a new roof. Pick it here for our friends at Lockhart Roofing. Nobody better in Jacksonville. How do I know? They are a local certified Master Elite contractor, and that means they have a GAF Master Elite warranty. That's the best in the roofing industry. In this day and age, don't settle for cheaper discount roofers. Lockhart Roofing has been here for decades. They aren't going anywhere. Call my friends at Lockhart Roofing, 994-3851. That's 994-3851. Lockhart Roofing, Jacksonville's best for Jacksonville people. He was the best back in Jacksonville. It has to be Fred Taylor. Fred Taylor joins Dan and Jeff on The Drill Monday mornings at 8.30. A tough guy. Monday morning running back with Fred Taylor is fueled by Epstein and Robbins and B&B Fuel and Lubricants. Daily's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily's Dash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Have you tried golfing at the improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, I'll tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Tap House. Now, go to the website, that is CimarronGolfClub.com, and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program, and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. Let's go! It's time for opening night, so don't you dare miss the Jacksonville Sharks' first home game against the IFL defending champions, the Bay Area Panthers, Saturday, April 6th at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. Kickoff, 7 o'clock. Let's go! Tickets as low as $15. You can't find Saturday family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or go to jacksharks.com. Dust off your boots, grab your cowboy hat for Western night. Join us at 5 p.m. for Shark Fest, every home game located outside the arena for our pre-game party. Help us rock the tank as we roll out the 2023 NAL Championship Band. Let's go! Don't miss our opening game. It's this Saturday, April 6th, 7 o'clock. Let's show them what Jax is bringing to the table at the Five Star Veterans Memorial Arena. Be a part of indoor football fun and exciting non-stop action. For tickets as low as $15, call 904-621-0700. Don't forget your cowboy hats. Let's go! Let's go! For the greenest, luscious lawn on the block, choose the local legends, Round Tree Sod. Don't just settle for ordinary. Let Round Tree Sod deliver you a picture-perfect lawn. To get a free estimate, call 7414-SOD. 7414-SOD. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Nobody knows the Jags like Johnny O. Oh, knows. Brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. On 1010XL. I believe Brian Thomas Jr. is very underrated. I think Brian Thomas Jr., if developed correctly, could turn out to be one of the receivers one of the best receivers from this year's draft because he's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the upside potential. It's just that he played on the other side from the league neighbors, mm-hmm. and Jaden Daniels was obviously looking towards the league neighbors because that's who he was used to throwing to. Well, it didn't hurt Brian Thomas uh, finding the end zone a ton no, yeah. at LSU. He certainly did that. Uh, and it, it's interesting, Tony said he's – uh, thinks Brian Thomas is a little underrated. He ranks him 17th. I've seen a lot of people have him kind of like mm-hmm. right there in that's, that. It's usually, yeah, that's, I guess, feels like his sweet spot, if you will. It does, yeah, right? Yeah. And and I think what I hear him saying is even though he ranks him 17, he thinks that he might be a little better than that. He, he might be able to close that gap. Yeah. It might not be as big a gap as you think between those guys. And if, Look, that's the thing. The Jags feel that way about mm-hmm. that guy. And you could say, well, we have to have corner. Well, you, you have to have a lot of things. Right. So, you know, for the ones who say, you're not giving Trevor enough weapons. Well, you, you, 
17th pick is one player. Right, you don't get two up. You get Terry and Arnold. You get Quinion Mitchell. You get Brian Thomas. You get a lineman. Yeah. There's not get 17 A and 17 B. Unfortunately, yeah. it'd be cool. And Unless un- we trade back. Yeah, unfortunately, okay. Houston's the team that just traded for Stephon Diggs and signed Daniel Hunter. Yeah. Right? They did both. They're not ignoring one side of the ball to Still help Still going to block Daniel Hunter? Right. Like, they're, they're addressing both sides of the ball in a big way in this offseason when they have a young quarterback going into year two. It's affordable for them to do all these different things and take some of these chances. It's certainly – they're going to be the team that's going to be picked to win the South. Like, there's virtually no doubt about that. You know, at this point in time. Honestly, the will Texans. anyone pick anyone other than them? I can't to imagine win the South. who. Yeah. yeah, other than someone looking for clicks, because yeah. as soon as they, oh, there's one, there's right. one, oh, look at this guy, right? And that person will immediately get a bunch of clicks, and that's the way life works. Life is, is measured in clicks, is what it is. Oh, boy, the yeah. value of life is measured in clicks. Uh, all right, today's Chad and Sandy Real Estate question of the day. Name a player you think the Jags might take with the 17th pick in this month's NFL draft that you really hope that they don't. Nate Wiggins has been the top guy yeah. for me for this, for the, the size. Chop Robinson again. I know Tony's like, hey, he dominated two years ago. Well, he dominated two and a five and a half sacks in a full season of football. And I get it. Sacks are not the only measure. But I'd like a guy who is so dominant that can be considered a top 15 prospect for the NFL Mm -hmm. when he's going against college players to actually put up big numbers. Why is that? I don't think that's hard to to expect. I I don't want another Caleb on chase on projection. I just don't. Yeah, I – I guess Wiggins would sort of be the guy that I mean, I, um, that would concern you because of the size. So I'll go that route. 173 yeah. pounds, man. Yeah. And I was watching him run uh, at the combine. He looks 100 like he. he I mean, looks he's fast like as that hell, size. and that's no great. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so it it feels like a tough fit on that front. And someone's probably going to take him in the first round. Yeah, I would right? imagine that he winds up and in the people, first oh round. Oh, my God, they got oh, look at the speed they added to that secondary. Right. Yeah, I know, Demps, you mentioned that you had a, a deeper list than, you know, just those two guys. Like, those were the two guys that jumped to mind Latu. for me. Latu's yeah. another one yeah. because of the injury history for okay. me. Brock Bowers is one just because I don't think Tight that, that – yeah. I just think you're duplicating a lot of what Evan Ingram already gives you at the position. And oh, it, Bowers? Yeah, Bowers. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I, yeah, I don't know how likely they are to take him, but I think there's a chance that if he's yeah. there, you're you're considering Brock Bowers, like, who many still have rated as like a top six or seven yeah, overall player. Yeah. Like I think about it today, and I think today I'm kind of on that side of it that, that I don't really get it. I think if we got to draft night and that wound up being the name called, I'd be like, I kind of like this. Well, I'd be like, look, it's a weapon, and it, that's the way we're going. Right. I'd be very curious. Like though, that like, feels like one of those. Like Wiggins would be harder to sell that to me on. And Chop Robinson would be harder to sell that to me on. But the Brock Bowers thing, I everywhere, you know, he's being listed as a top seven, eight player in this draft. Like, if they got him at 17, I'd be like, I think they actually got a value in getting him at 17, even if it's not a position that I had circled that they need to address in the Who'd first Who would you rather have, him or uh, Brian Thomas? Uh, I'd... Honestly, I'd probably lean Bowers. I'd go Thomas all yeah. day. I thought you had Thomas at the top of your wish list. I did. Like a week ago. But I'd probably lean Bowers if that was the actual choice. Who do you want? I'm going to go Thomas. I want the 6'4 guy who yeah. scored 8 billion touchdowns, please. And runs 4-3 something. Please. He does. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, if it's Bowers, I'm going to hope for the best. I'm not this guy yeah. that can tell you I know for sure. I have my opinions like everybody else. What I'm not going to be is <sighs> – with rare exception, man. I mean, it's like, I get it. If they take, and it's rake straw, right? I, I don't love him as much as they do, but I understand mm-hmm. the position. They must see something sure. in him, right? It's like, as long as they're not going crazy, like, oh, Trey Benson was the highest rated player on our board, so we took him at 48. Like, let's not be dumb, right? Right? There, you have limited resources, but I feel like there are people out there, and I know there are because we get their feedback all the time. If they don't take X, then if they don't take a wide receiver, they don't love Trevor Lawrence. If they don't take a right. corner, then they're not trying to stop anybody. Or if they don't take They better this, take a corner. They better. Or, or, what? or what? Right. Or what? Or they'll take one in the second round or the third or maybe the fourth and or, the fifth. And, or I'll be mad. Right. And and that's fine. <laughs> but, and like, again, it just comes down to, uh, I feel like 
like I understand I'm going to have a preference on draft night, but I also understand there there are a bunch of combinations that could put this thing together. Mm-hmm. I would probably not take Byron Murphy because yeah, I, I just think man, you just signed Armstead. He's going to be here for a while. You, you, you either believe that Devon Hamilton was worth that money or not, right? And that he's back and all and that. And he's back, and is he going to be back to the guy that you gave all that money to, anticipating a big performance? I mean, I get it. Byron Murphy's a good player, and if you can have a mm-hmm. dominant defensive line, but you're talking about drafting a guy who's going to play like less than 50% right. of the snaps that'd probably. Be a, that'd be a tough. Tough sell to me, not to everybody. To right. right. Still see a lot. I've seen Bucky Brooks mock him to the Jags, you know. Yeah. and I mean, Unless I, it's revealing what they actually feel about Hamilton. Possibly. Right, right, and like even all the conversation at this point about Hamilton is all, they don't really feel that way behind the scenes, but like we talked about when the season ended, there's no need to burn guys until it's time to move on from the guys. But that right? that's a, such an indictment, though. If you just handed him this massive contract last year, now you don't feel that way about him? What, because he had an injury plague season? It was like, a weird injury, Can you evaluate yeah. him at all based on what you saw last year? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. You know, um... Yeah. All right, let me just read through some of the names that got suggested. A lot of Wiggins, several Chop Robinsons, Tyler Guyton. Or he's got stiff feet. Don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, at this time of year, you hear everything right. about everybody, right? All these different things. Eli Manning, small ankles. Uh, Matt said, well, I do think they're going to be solid players for another team. Wiggins, uh, De- Cooper DeGene, Marius Mims, or Byron Murphy. He wants a taller, stronger corner. Doesn't really want to spend a first on an offensive tackle or a defensive tackle. I, I, I get, if you're saying for this team in this specific situation I don't yeah. think mo- most people would say obviously you could draft an offensive tackle or sure. defensive tackle in round one if he's a good player uh Byron Murphy from Baxter Xavier Worthy that's another skinny guy I've got to I could deal with Worthy more than I could deal with Wiggins even though he's a little bit you know thinner I don't want to say frail he was productive in the SEC. He was more productive than Adonai Mitchell was, mm-hmm. you know, on the same team. He does run as fast as anybody we've seen coming in the National Football League. And you put him out there with what they have, uh, that's pretty intriguing. I don't think at 17. Probably not. Yeah. I want him, but I, I put it this way. Initially, I was like, uh-uh, no way. Now it's eh. I'm a little bit more, like, I, I could – if they traded back and drafted Worthy as opposed to, like, to 23 and drafted Worthy as opposed to trading back to 23 and drafting Wiggins, I'd feel better about Worthy than I would about Wiggins. That's me, personally. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Edrian Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M. Uh, you think they're taking him at 17? Yeah, I'd, oof. I'd, I'd be stunned. Okay, I'd be stunned as well. Um, several for Johnny Newton, mentioned in the Illinois defensive tackle. Um and, again, that's a guy who had – You haven't really seen those names a whole lot with him. You still just, see him yeah. lingering in, like, that that 20 to 25 and, range in some big boards, so to speak, you know. Um, more with Murphy, Brian Thomas. Several people mentioned Brian Thomas as the guy that they don't want, either because they don't think we need it at wide receiver. Some people have suggested that. We're better than we think at wide receiver, or they just don't think Thomas is worth the pick. Uh, and it's rake straw. Um, I would say Wiggins – the runaway winner, Chop Robinson, second. Maybe Cooper DeGene getting the third most amount. Keon Coleman, somebody mentioned. I, I don't think there's much I haven't chance. Really seen a whole lot. There yeah, at 17. That, that and, and that's not based on what Tony Pauline said. I still see him mock plenty in the middle of the second round mm-hmm. to people. Right. And if you ask me who the better player was, I watch a lot of Florida State football. I take Keon Coleman over Johnny Wilson all the time. It's not just highlight catches. I mean, it was like Johnny Wilson – Dropped a lot of footballs. John, Johnny Wilson, to me, he's got the huge body. Be great, But Keon Coleman, even though he doesn't run a fast 40 time, I think he's more explosive, like he's, vertically. He's a little faster. Right. He, he's, he's a good – he's such a contested ball catcher, man. Anyway, I don't. Johnny Wilson, to me, you told me the Jags are going to draft him at 48. It's uh, so he's I, a guy you don't want at 48. I don't want it 40. Okay. That's tomorrow's All question. Right. Right, John. <laughs> anyway, uh, what you got Take cooking over at Jaguars.com? Uh, heading over to the MEC right now to be on the Huddle Up podcast with J.P. Shatter, and Bucky Bricks. Your guy, J.P. Shatter. He's um, my guy. Love and uh, uh, getting into our draft previews, uh, written draft previews, probably starting next week. So that's what we'll be doing. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll be reading it over at Jaguars.com. Uh, three weeks and one day yeah, it's coming to up. the first round. It'll be here uh, right on top of us. Before you know it, thanks to Tony Pauline for joining us today. Of course, for Johnny O as well. We'll have more 
uh, Jaguar goodies for you tomorrow. For Tony Smith and Dylan Denmark, I'm Mike Dempsey. Stick around because Helmets and Heels is coming your way for the next couple of hours right here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. It's a Weight Loss Wednesday on Jaguars Today from the 